scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Before now, before now, there are certain pathways that when men see you following, they can almost predict. But right now, you see worshippers that you do not know. Are you a musician or a prophet or an apostle? Because there are hybrid spiritual combinations. The, the hunger of men and the urgency of God's prophetic program is causing men to outsource graces. It's a dangerous spiritual combination. You will see men that are like armies. One man. One man. Because of the abundance of the graces that they have captured hallelujah so you look at that man you are seeing a Benny Hinn you are seeing a Reinhard Bonke you are seeing a Catherine Kuhlman and you are saying what kind of believer are you who combined you like this the intelligence of the spirit ah. Men who don't have the voice to sing, but they can receive songs like ladders from the spirit and give it to the ministry of psalmistry and say, sing us into higher realms. Sing us, let us ascend the ladders that will open to us the vistas of the spirit. Listen, do not be afraid. You started your journey thinking you are only a businessman. But now you've gone through the training of a psalmist. You've gone through the training of an entrepreneur. You are now in the training of a prophet. You too, you don't even know the name of what you will become. He simply calls us witnesses because the nature of your assignment. Oh, David, a day will come. It is your song that will come out from your spirit. But don't just call me a musician because I sing. There is still a prophet there. And hiding behind the layer of the prophet, there is still a king that is there. Can I tell you, hear me, there are some of you, God dealt with you in certain ways, but he has never used the product of your growth. He kept it. In the future, you will revisit it. There was a time you were writing songs and it stopped. And you think that that ministry has died. It has not died. God is only focusing on other trainings. A day will come, he will tell you, reach down to that weapon of psalmistry. Bring it out. I suspended it so that I would train you in the prophetic. Now that you have become a prophet with fire, bring out that weapon of psalmistry. Obedience. Obedience to scripture. Please listen. Obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions. Can I tell you? Prophetic seasons don't just demand discernment and flexibility they do not just demand strength and courage they demand obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions whatever he says to do do it the miracle of the wine is not just in your moving forward it's in your moving as he commanded i prophesied as i was commanded not as i wanted not as i wished 
the desires of many will lead them to perdition because they cannot submit their desire to the obedience of scripture or the obedience of the prophetic let me show you two scriptures number one is found in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5 you must be willing to receive and honor scripture and honor prophetic instructions and Simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all the night and have caught nothing he says nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net can I tell you prophetic instructions are powerful when they are guided and administered within the jurisdiction of scripture prophecy is able to rewrite the narrative every time seasons are about to open there is always a manifestation of the prophetic when it was time for the famine in Samaria to end the prophet Elisha came and with one decree by this time tomorrow everything the climate changed prophetic instructions is it the miracle of abundant supply in Samaria is it the miracle of the axe head in 2nd Kings chapter 1 to 7 6 1 to 7 the axe head that floated it was all through and by prophetic instructions is it the victory in the days of Jehoshaphat in 2nd Chronicles 21 to 30 all of them depend on obedience to prophetic instructions let me tell you what prophetic instructions are not number one it is not manipulating people to gratify self it is not manipulating people to gratify flesh that is not prophecy it's just the limitation of humans when they are not broken and are not aligned to God authentic genuine biblical prophetic instructions come as a scriptural instruction from God through his spirit are we together now and then through a human vessel to the people for instance declaring a fast it says sanctify yourself for in three days God will speak to you he will come to you reveal himself he will speak to you prophetic instructions if it be thou bid me come he said come the excellency of prophetic instructions is that if and when they are obeyed they always deliver because God is back of it he confirmed the words of his messengers, he says. Hallelujah. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now you understand that scripture. Behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing in your life demands discernment and flexibility I do a new thing demands strength and courage I do a new thing demands that you obey that you learn to live by the word of God it says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now please sit down let me give you this to wrap up tonight's teaching but then this will be the ladder upon which we will take off from next week this one now is a prophetic revelation God gave me there are five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ right now I want you to write them down five prophetic seasons the Lord revealed to me that is being opened to the body of Christ now and we must understand how to discern in the spirit and how to walk with this this is why this teaching came by the spirit number one the first prophetic season that is opening up to us right now is a season of the harvest please write a season of the harvest there will be such massive salvation of souls according to Matthew chapter 9 from verse 37 38 we are in a season of the harvest then saith he unto his disciples the harvest is truly plenteous but the laborers are few it says next verse 38 now pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that means this harvest that you see all these souls that you see who are careless there is a caretaker the caretaker is the Holy Ghost to see to it that as many of them 
who come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. He's called the Lord of the harvest. That he will send forth laborers into his field. So every sinner in the mind of God is a harvest. It's not a seed growing. It's a harvest ready to be sickled into the fold. It is the bankruptcy of laborers. What is the implication of the season of harvest? I don't want to go ahead of myself. We'll leave that for next week. But the season of the harvest demands that there is a kind of training. There is an awakening that God is going to be placing upon men. Are we together? That will cause that through mighty signs and wonders, so many will come to Jesus within the time that we have left. The first season that is being opened before us now Believers, body of Christ, we must discern is the season of the harvest. Are you ready for number two? The second season the Lord revealed to me is called the season of abundance of grace. The season of abundance of grace. Manifestations of divine abilities and enablements in a capacity that has not been seen. You will see men carry weighty graces, weighty possibilities. Ordinary men, but empowered in such an unusual way. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Acts 10, 38. And he went about. You don't go about. The difference between a madman and a destiny changer is what is on you. A madman too is going about, but he's not doing good. He's not healing they that are oppressed of the devil. There is a grace and a mantle. It's called an abundance of grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make Make all grace mm. abound. Abound means coordinated towards your direction. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Most times when we quote this scripture, we only limit it to finance. This has nothing to do with money or finance. It was referenced while he was teaching on sowing and reaping. But this is a very powerful, potent spiritual law. God is able to make all grace a season of abundance of grace. What does that mean? Unusual manifestations. Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 to 32. You know the prophecy. The prophecy of Joel. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29. It says, and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. 30. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is very powerful. Abundance of grace. That means men and women will carry unusual ability of the spirit unusual abilities men like Joshua who would speak and literally the sun would stand still hallelujah you will see men you see I was reading the other day about the church in Nigeria again my goodness history and technology did not combine themselves properly to do justice for us to really explore the extent of grace and the hand of God that was upon these patriarchs who have now joined the cloud of witnesses when you study the history of the church in Nigeria some of these are old folks and our fathers who have now transited these men operated in strange dimensions but they did not have the advantage of technology to have a rich capture of their manifestations Elemental forces literally bowed to the dominion of the grace of God upon them. But you see, as great as that is, Smith Wigglesworth died living a prophecy that there is still a generation coming that will outdo every manifestation of the hand of God upon their lives. I truly believe that this is the generation. Yes. I truly believe that. Not because we are better than the generations past. 
it has so pleased God by the election of grace and the prophetic timing that a generation will arise ordinary men but with such an abundance of grace number three what is the third prophetic season that is being opened to the church are you ready the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies this is what God told me the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies prophecies from scripture and prophecies from modern history there are few of these mighty men we know who died without leaving a prophecy some of us have not found the prophecies but some of these men under the unction of the spirit especially around their final days on earth they immortalize their impact by leaving certain prophecies the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning. So that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Hallelujah. There are great men and women who left very serious prophecies across several denominations. Some of them could not speak English, but they still spoke. They documented their writings for the generation that is coming some of them this some of these these prophecies were harbingers they were signposts warnings cautions some of them were encouragements some of them they were revelations of prophetic blueprints pitfalls to jump when you got to that level it's important that we obtain grace first from scripture and then the wisdom of the ancient God is empowering those prophetic words for some of them those prophetic words are hundreds of years old but they will still come to pass for instance the prophecy about the revival that is happening across the nations don't you think a group of men were just stared and just had fire like that don't you think the prophecy about Nigeria has been there before some of us were born hallelujah I remember a group of people who a man I, I met one time and they left a prophetic word they were praying there's a song it is raining all around me you know that song now I can hear the latter rain now hold on do you know what brought about that song it was in the place of prayer it was a prophetic word for a generation that's how that song came Give us more rain until we are wet and we are soaked in the latter rain. There are many songs you have been singing. You call them hymns, but they are prophecies. They contain codes within them that will be unlocked in this season. Many of you, one of these nights, you will go to sleep as usual, except that in your sleep, you will wake up and you will not be the same person who went to sleep. And God would say, you have finally found it. That when these fathers were prophesying, they spoke and it concerned you through the loins of time. And it is time for you to walk in partnership with that prophecy. It was true that Emmanuel would come from a virgin. But there was no name Mary that was mentioned. A woman aligned herself with prophecy. If Mary rejected it, the Holy Ghost would have gone to look for another virgin. Only God knows how many prophecies are hovering around right now. The prophecy about the restoration of the healing mantle. Kenneth Copeland spoke it. R.W. Shambach spoke it. These are, these are the many that I know. These men spoke it that there will be a prophetic renaissance of the authentic healing ministry. In the similitude of the tent meetings that used to happen in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. But all prophecies are fulfilled through the hands of men. So somebody will get up one day and begin to sense in your heart to study the materials of Charles and Francis Hunter. You don't even know what is leading you. You are, you are seeing a grace is lead. You see, let me tell you something about mantles. When, when a mantle is looking for you, your life stops being normal. There is an energy and a hunger that makes you strange, almost like a madman. When others are sleeping, you are awake. You do not know by what impulse you are kept. You try to sleep, sleep will be taken away from you because the destinies connected to your obedience will not allow you sleep. Hallelujah. 
only God knows how many prophecies and you see no matter how long a prophetic word stays unfulfilled a time will always come you would think Jesus will never appear even after 400 years from Malachi to Matthew theologically speaking there was no mention of God no nothing he was supposed to supposedly a dark age in the history of the church from Malachi to Matthew 400 years thereabout you would think he would not come suddenly a madman just shows up from nowhere filled with the Holy Ghost from his, mo his mother's womb coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah found himself in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey you will say thank God this madman is in the wilderness this kind of man should not come into the city yet that was the man who was look at the way this guy's life was literally sacrificed he had not a normal life simply because he was the one to ordain Jesus and then one day do you know that Jesus was not the only one who was born the day he was born he had birthday mates yet they were not the Savior and then this young boy is born and Mary had no idea she just knew an angel said this man and you know she just felt one of those prophets and Jesus grew in wisdom stature and favor with God and with men became a mighty man indeed the Savior listen ladies and gentlemen please hear me there are many prophecies you see the manifestation of the diverse graces that are in Nigeria the manifestation of the graces in Africa God in 2005 I had a vision and in that vision I saw young Asians Asians fair-skinned Asians fire came from heaven and rested upon just one of them and then it started spreading like a candle and it moved until it spread across those people and the Holy Ghost told me that there will be such a move of the Spirit in Asia and then in another vision the Lord began to speak to me that Africa that rejected stone you see that that rejected stone please listen carefully and I have taught on this many many times that rejected stone that Africa will herald Jesus Christ the continents Europe has been given their chance to herald Jesus America has been given their chance to herald Jesus but Africa that rejected stone when that prophecy came many of us were not born but the prophecy was still there still hovering around and now one by one there are people being handpicked from the south of Nigeria from the north of Nigeria you will see one person maybe from Borno Maiduguri not even having any comeliness yet the prophecy will land on him you will see another Yoruba man or woman minding their business the prophecy will land you will see another person whose grandfather supported missionaries and God will say no in this prophetic formation I must honor this family and the grace will land upon them it will come to the middle belt and hand pick a few people this is what is happening and then it is spreading to Africa my God Ghana Kenya Uganda South Africa Rwanda ordinary men some of you may not know what is driving you I am telling you now there is zeal without knowledge but there is prophecy seeking fulfillment when the prophet said by this time tomorrow the four lepers were not there to hear it one morning they just could not sit down again they said why sit we here the same way you got up and said why am I prayerless you do not know that is a prophecy that a prophet will rise from the east a prophet will rise from the west a prophet will rise from the north it is that prophetic word that has now created a dissatisfaction within your spirit I am sure that when the prophet spoke in the loins of time and prophecy will come to land upon a minister do sin and raise him up and give him songs rest upon a Nathaniel Bassi and you see you just when you look at men you just think these people are uniquely distinct by an election of grace yes but let me tell you the truth when you align with prophecy you will find yourself looking like someone in scripture they have taught you you have to see a parallel of your life in future in the scripture there are men and women 
who you will look at your life and see that this is Esther forming this is Elijah forming this is John forming this is Peter forming because mantles never leave the earth no it is only human bodies that live so there are many mantles no mantle in scripture today is in heaven no when mantles come they do not go back again mantles maintain the continuity of God's program Ah, only God knows who TL Osborne's mantle is still looking for. Only God knows who Catherine Kuhlman's mantle is still looking for. It, no, it doesn't. Listen, listen, listen. Just because the mantle fell on a white man or a white woman, no, it does not mean it must. No, God does not work like that. Charles and Francis Hunter. They have gone to be with the Lord, but only God knows who will carry their mantles. You see, the truth is that you cannot confuse mantles. You can know that this is a... They, they looked at Elisha and they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And the mantles are many, oh, don't think there are just a few people. No. There are many, many, many mantles. The mantles that were upon Solomon that granted them access to wealth and riches. I know that one of these days, that mantle will find somebody. I'm telling you, this is not just the issue of financial prosperity. This is commanding dominion over resources for nations. But you see, you have one assignment to prepare yourself like Mary to say be it unto me according to your word be it unto my destiny according to your word let's finish up so that we can pray my goodness I'm seeing a boiling pot just a pot boiling with water this is what I'm seeing Parato Shalika Fariata number three a season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies let me give you the last two five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ. Number one, I said, the season of the harvest. Number two, the season of abundance of grace. Number three, the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. And some of these prophecies are very ancient. Number four, are you ready? The fourth season that is being opened to the body of Christ now, is a season of intense spiritual warfare intense spiritual warfare and you take my word for it intense spiritual warfare this is a call for a higher level of spiritual intelligence this is a call for a higher level of the grace for prayer intense spiritual warfare because every time a prophetic vista is open go and read your bible satan is also interested whether it is jesus he will kill children for his sake whether it is moses he will kill other children for his sake satan is always interested in the attention of god where is god looking at if god is looking at the north satan is interested in the north if God is looking at Nigeria, Satan is interested in Nigeria. One of the ways you know where the attention of God is, is the area of interest as far as Satan's attack is concerned. So don't ask why he seems to be zooming his attention on your family. He knows that the eyes of Jehovah has looked upon your family. But it demands intense spiritual warfare. You are a man of God here. The days of folding your arms to believe it to be ministry as usual is over. You must learn how to master the dynamics of the altar. How to command power with God and with men. Otherwise you will not survive the days that are coming. Hallelujah. Spiritual warfare. Darkness looms across the horizon. Hallelujah. Satan is releasing every arsenal, not to glorify him, but the truth is the truth. Releasing every arsenal in whatever fashion. But the Bible says now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. But we must be people of spiritual intelligence 
they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes the intensity of the warfare in the days of paul it was so serious that as prayerful as paul was he said brethren pray for us brethren not just give to us pray for us this is the reason why you see god steering prophetic intercessory ministries men and women who may never have the honor of standing on the pulpit to preach but my goodness these are people who they god grants them grace to watch over his program across nations because of the depth of their grace to intercede not everybody will hold the mic and preach not everybody will go to the nations the formation of the army i have taught you is a tripartite formation prophetic intercessors those that are sent and those that provide supplies this is the tripartite formation intense warfare this is a time to pray for one another this is a time to stand anybody you know and you love that God is using don't just clap for them pray for them are we together yes satan is selecting men in these days that represents nations to bring them down instead of fighting 20 million people he will fight one person who controls the fate and the courage of those 20 million people the bible says strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter that means everybody you love you owe it as a responsibility pray for every man of god every psalmist that God will keep them, that their quiver will be full of arrows. Intense warfare. I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hindered us. And Satan will use anything. This is a prophetic message. Anything. You know that God is raising you to be a sign and a wonder in business. Begin to pray. Don't make the mistake of the rich fool and say, I have abundance. My soul finds rest. It's only when you are alive that your money finds relevance. Make sure you are not careless. Spiritual intelligence. Some of you, this is the season where you surround your life with all kinds of prophetic seeds. This is where you engage with intelligence. The Bible says Job gave, offered sacrifices to garrison the lives of his children. It was only by the permission that was given to Satan. If not, Satan himself testified that he could not touch Job. There are, there are spiritual covenant dynamics that can close certain doors that only God can open. There are some of you, God is giving you intense instructions. For instance, he may say, sow a prophetic seed. You may not know why, but with it, you are using that seed to close a day of adversity that may want to be open. Intense spiritual warfare. The Bible says, speaking about the, the, the end times, that God himself had to shorten those days so that the elect themselves. Do you know what that means? That God has to shorten the days of persecution and all of that so that the elects themselves will not be victims. That is a call for prayer. Jesus said, watch and pray. That means your defense and your being sustained in the days of adversity will demand intelligence. Watch means use your eyes, use your mind. Be as wise as serpents, gentle as dove. Don't just pray. He said, watch and pray. Africa prays, but we don't watch. Watch and pray. Intelligence will be needed in your survival. There were times where Paul wanted to enter a city and he was afraid. And God said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. That means influence is a weapon of defense, even in this end time. Watch and pray understand all the spiritual arsenals and as god empowers us to dish you those arsenals don't reject any weapon it will be needed for your survival when the weapon of prosperity comes receive it and add it to your quiver prayer receive it the word the prophetic there are times that when you stand 
in the battleground the Lord will say bring out your arsenal of prosperity and that's what will open a door for you there are times he will say bring out your arsenal of worship and you'll bring it out don't just choose one weapon and make the mistake of Samson and say no my hair cannot be cut be full of them happy is a man whose quiver is full of them even though he's speaking about children but when your quiver is full it grants you grace and stability you have a variety of spiritual weapons to use hallelujah yes jesus had men he had the holy ghost he had resources he had power he had influence the only reason why he died was because he gave himself Please hear me, Africa, believers, do not reject any spiritual arsenal that God is bringing for you now. There are people who will survive literally on the wings of prosperity. There are people who will survive on the wings of relationships. There are people who will survive on the wings of all kinds of things. Yes. There are times where it is somebody holding your hand who will keep you alive in the storms. There are times when it is your intellectual prowess that will keep you. Paul was bound one time and he saw the Sadducees and Pharisees. He knew that these people would destroy him. He intelligently now brought the issue of resurrection from the dead. And there was confusion between two of them because they do not agree on that. And that suspended his judgment. It gave him an edge until he was free. You will, the end times will need the deploying of every spiritual arsenal. Your brain will work. The mantle will work. The angelic will work. The name of Jesus will work. Relationships will work. Your gift will work. Are we together now? Do not reject any spiritual arsenal. Warfare demands that you bring out your best. You see nations fighting wars, and when the wars get intense, they bring out certain fighter jets, certain armory that sometimes have been kept and only tested for decades. They bring it out to show the intensity of the warfare. The seasons that befall us are the seasons that will demand bringing our best spiritual arsenal to the point that God himself stands behind us like a mighty terrible one. Number five, the fifth prophetic season that is before the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in this day and in this season is a season of rewards. This is what God told me, a season of rewards. Let me tell you sincerely, there will be mighty visitations upon people, upon families, upon regions, and God is going to be coming to them to reward them for their contributions towards his program so far this is what the lord told me a season of reward is coming there are families that generationally participated in kingdom come across many 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 dimensions some of the people to be rewarded have long gone god will still look for their children and their children's children and reward them if he visits iniquity to the third and fourth generation the old testament tells us then he can reward even greater than that so there are many of you who are going to step into prepared blessings. Blessings you know you do not have a direct hand in, but it was the sacrifice your, when the missionaries came to your village. It was in your great-grandfather's house. He kept them. And before they died, some of them were persecuted, but they left a blessing. They said, you have done this to me. May others do it to your children. All of them died without receiving the promise, but God is not a man that he should lie. That word must still come to pass. Do you believe what I'm telling you? This is a season of rewards. There are many of you who are at the gate like Mordecai. You saved the life of Ahasuerus, but they, it was only written, but nobody rewarded you. My Bible says that night could not the king sleep. And the king, Ahasuerus, he called. He said, who is in the chamber? Bring me the chronicles. And when they opened it, they found where Mordecai saved his life, but he was not rewarded. And it was Haman that was used to design the reward of Mordecai. Sometimes the blessing you think will come from one believer uncle may not come from a believer uncle it may be a non-believer that god will put pressure upon him and say you are an egyptian but it's time to transfer something you see 
you have heard prophecies about wealth transfer you've heard prophecies about so many things let me tell you those prophecies are not a lie they are not a license for irresponsibility you see many believers have folded their arms and not, they are not diligent and productive and they just leave it all up to god but do not make a mistake of laughing at or downplaying that prophecy because it is true that there is such a massive manifestation of that transfer especially for kingdom programs there are families that God is going to bless them with divine health that they cannot explain. This is a reward. God does not just give things. I have taught you that there are three levels of authority in the kingdom as far as rewarding men are concerned. The least and the third level of reward is reward and dominion over things. Remember my teaching? That when God rewards men, he gives you things. That is the least level. Of authority and reward the second level is reward as authority over nations systems and structures the highest level of reward God can give a man on earth today is to steward his program God can make you captain not just over his inheritance but over his program so God can say the next move of the spirit for 10 years this is the person I am putting to spearhead that move is the highest honor God can ever give any man aside from salvation and there are men who are going to be rewarded you will see that God is going to increase the bishopric of many men he is going to be collecting the one talent from unfaithful people and adding it to those who have turned five to ten you will see multiplication of graces upon people capacity when God increases a man there are three things that happens to that man number one is a multiplication of grace and unction number two is an enlargement of your spiritual influence number three is a committal giving you greater spiritual responsibilities hallelujah so you will see men that started as evangelists but you will see other dimensions in them because certain bishoprics have been collected from careless people and added to faithful people. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that the bishopric of a man can be taken and that one talent carelessly used can be added to the one who brought ten. Hallelujah. So do not marvel when you see men stepping into accelerated levels of spiritual influence, of power, of grace, of access. This is one of the seasons that is upon us. Hallelujah. They looked at the disciples. They had faithfully followed Jesus. And something came upon them. The Bible says, these are they that turned the world upside down. And what I'm telling you is not just happening in Nigeria and Africa alone. This is a global move of the spirit. But we are so privileged as a continent and as a nation for some reason. I think it's just the act of God's grace that the prophetic light for the nation has zoomed upon our nation and upon our continent. And so we are going to experience, it's already happening. Do not miss next week. I will be sharing with you other prophetic instructions. Don't forget our series, Navigating Prophetic Seasons. We looked at, behold, I do a new thing tonight. Helping us understand God's program. Let me do a one minute recap and then we'll find somewhere to begin to pray. That when God wants to begin to introduce a man into prophetic seasons, among the many things that he does is to take you away from over depending and and to take your mind away from your past good past bad past remember ye not the former things the moment they are former things they have they sustain the ability to distract you by bringing fear and complacency or pride and indiscipline either ways we are mandated to forget about them and then it says behold focus position your spirit be prepared he says I do a new thing a new thing demanding discernment and flexibility a new thing demanding strength and courage a new thing demanding obedience and I've shared with you now that there are five prophetic seasons it's like a veil that is being opened over the body of Christ number one is the season of the harvest number two the season of abundance of grace number three 
the season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies, both scriptural and prophecies as by patriarchs that have now joined the cloud of witnesses. Number four, the season of intense spiritual warfare, a call for higher levels of spiritual intelligence, a call for greater dedication in the place of prayer and spiritual warfare. And number five, is the season of rewards where God is bringing consolation to people we do not love the Lord and we do not serve him listen just because of things I have taught you however in the economy of God he will never allow people to serve him indefinitely without being rewarded Hebrews 11 and verse 6 the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists he is and that he is a rewarder a rewarder it is a name that he is called God rewards men so sooner or later some of you will receive a knock on your spiritual door like a parcel from DHL you know how they come to you and they knock your door and say are you so 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 and so is this your address someone's address there is a parcel coming from heaven and with it is written the name of your children your children's children and for you some of those rewards are so powerful they will grant you rest roundabout that is why we took out time to pray that God is visiting men I hope you believe this when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he says we were like them that dream. There are people who lament and say we see not our signs. God, you gave us a sign that when we see we should rejoice that victory is here. We are tired of waiting and we've not seen the sign. Let me encourage someone, hold on, you are almost there. One day to your miracle, don't let the devil cheat you. You have stood for this long. Stand until the end. Are we together now? Yes, haven't done all to stand. Stand in prayer, stand in diligence, stand as you are serving the Lord. For some of you, you have felt so embarrassed serving the Lord. They've called you all kinds of names. Church this, Mother Mary, don't worry, the rewarder is coming. When he comes, he does not reward you in secret. Go and read your Bible. The Bible says, God who sees you in secret will reward you openly openly that someone will lose sleep and God will tell him for this my son give him a car give him a house and a million dollars in his account it does not make sense but it does not matter that is God for you God is beyond the realm of sense he's able to bless people the rewarder I have experienced these kinds of seasons in many levels in my own life to be very honest with you there are seasons where God decides to tell you my son my daughter Thank you for your faithfulness, serving my purposes. I am coming to you as a rewarder. It is a pleasant thing to see the rewarder in action. He can wipe your tears of many years in one day. Do you know, I'm wrapping up, there are many people today who you cannot quantify the sacrifice of their service unto God. Their time, their resources, there are times I'm traveling and I just rest my head in the aircraft and I'm saying, my God, if not for the love of God, who is going to do this? Stretch from pillar to post. Can I tell you, maybe there's some preacher following and you are saying, Apostle, I am tired. I've been asking the Lord to bring me a consolation. I give you good news tonight in this series that the God of heaven is also a rewarder and that there is a spiritual parcel right from the throne of his majesty that is coming to you and it will be written with your name unmistakable it will be clear that God has come to visit you and for you Genesis 21 and verse 1 where we started off will be your testimony and the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he had said and the Lord did unto Joshua Selman as he has spoken visitation and the doings of God it is your inheritance in Christ your own is a call to be faithful as we explore these seasons my assignment is to guide you but your assignment is to discern and to know what to do after the order of the sons of Issachar. To those who are faithful, remain faithful. To those who are unwavering, it's time to stand your ground because the urgency of the matter, the urgency of prophecy in this season will not demand vacillations and carelessness. To the preacher who is discouraged, stand. To the businessman who is about giving up, stand. 
to the family person who is thinking is God faithful stand even to the one who has cried many tears in the secret and in the open stand the rewarder is coming my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by four years before the manifestation of jesus i'm sure anna the prophetess would have been tired of praying till now he's not come and I can imagine the spirit telling her, continue. Imagine the joy on her face the day they brought a baby. She said, finally, I've seen the consolation. 64 years of prayer, non-stop. How about the man, 38 years? Only God knows how many prophets may have come around him to say, don't worry. One day you are going to meet a Messiah and you'll be healed. He would have thought it was a lie. But finally, Jesus came. We're going to rise up and pray. Please, everybody stand and let's pray for a minute or two. There are three prayer points I'm going to give you and I want you to pray it from the depth of your heart. This is a very prophetic season and I do not want you to be careless. Prayer point number one, you are going to cry for the seeing eye, the hearing ear, capacity to discern what God is doing in your life in this season. Please open your mouth and pray in one minute. Grace, grace, capacity to discern. Someone is praying. Shabalika parakatoska frede beleketosh. Capacity to discern what you are doing. Capacity to interpret the writings on the wall. For koinonia, for my life, pray for yourself. Lord, what are you saying? What is the blueprint of your doings for the nation in this season? Reveal to me what is the strategy for victory in the days that are ahead call on me and i will answer he says i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not someone is investing a minute to your destiny you are praying from the depth of your heart zaria pray koinonia global pray following online pray lord grant me capacity to discern the things that you are saying to discern the move of the spirit the wind blow it where it listed you cannot tell whence it's coming or where it is going so is one who is led of the spirit discernment 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 Give me the eyes to see who are the men you are bringing into my life in this season. Give me the grace to discern so I do not throw away Jesus out of the boat. You may throw away Jonah, but don't make a mistake to throw away Jesus. Thinking Jesus is Jonah. Both of them slept. Jesus was sleeping. Jonah was sleeping. You may throw away Jonah, but wake Jesus. Don't throw him out of your boat. Pray for discernment. Lord, how should I do ministry in this season? How should I run my family in this season? Give me the prophetic blueprint for excellence, for dominion. No assumptions. What are you saying in this season? Lead me to the scripture that becomes a compass for me. And the flexibility to follow virgin dimensions in the spirit trusting that they will bring me to my place of destiny in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the second prayer you are going to pray for grace for obedience of number one obedience to scriptures and obedience to what compliant prophetic instructions please lift your voice and pray obedience having the readiness to judge every disobedience the Bible declares if and when your obedience is complete someone is praying in one minute someone is praying grace for obedience let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus 
that even though he was God, he considered it not robbery, but he humbled himself to die, even the death on the cross. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I like you to pray. Grace to be obedient. Grace to be obedient. Whatsoever he says to do, do. Whatsoever he says to say, say. Whatsoever he says to give, give. Wherever he says to go, go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final prayer for tonight, you are going to pray for yourself and all who are connected to you. You are going to declare the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous either through the ministry of men or through demonic manipulations create a spiritual garrison around your life your ministry oh it will not be lost my bishopric will not be taken someone pray in the name of jesus the lampstand that god has lit with his fire it will remain burning to shine the light to everybody go ahead and pray rebuke the spirit of fear Rebuke the spirit of pride. Rebuke the spirit of complacency. In the name of Jesus, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I take away distractions. Someone is praying. In your prayer is the restoration of your prayer life. In your prayer is the restoration of your word study life. In your prayer is the restoration of your passion for the house of God. The disciplines that bring and sustain graces. Pray. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The spirits of witchcraft, ancestry, manipulators that destroy the longevity of impact. I come against you in the name of Jesus. one minute pray with fire pray with passion from within your spirit cover your children cover your family Satan you will not take the life of any of my people Satan you will not destroy the relevance of every anybody around me decree it and declare soundness of health increase in wisdom longevity of impact Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me borrow one minute from you and add a prayer point for you. One prayer, I shall not die. Pray it violently for yourself and for your children. Lift your voice and pray. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Decree and declare, no, I shall not die in the name of Jesus. Declare that your ministry will not die. Declare that your business will not die. It's not only humans that die. What God has given you can be destroyed by Satan. I shall not die. Pray. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. In this prophetic season, no enchantment, no divination, no weapon, no demonic arrow will find expression in my life. I stand immune, fortified by the blood of the Lamb. Please invest one minute and pray. Just obey prophetic instructions in the name of Jesus Christ. Cover your parents, cover your siblings, cover your business people, cover the people in your ministry in the name of Jesus. 
protected by God, preserved by God. Let the mark of the blood be upon you. Dreams about death, dreams of seeing dead people, rebuke those dreams right now in the name of Jesus. Life, 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 even forevermore. Life, vitality, health, in the name of Jesus. Life, I cause the spirit of death. Pray, I cause the spirit of death. Not by accident, not by plane crash, not by the activity of wicked men. You are immune. The eyes of evil will not see you. It will not see your children. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed. No eye has seen, say no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to His work in me till Christ be born. One more time. No eye has, no, no ear has, no has heard what God has prepared for me. on me your glory revealed through me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me this is a moon this is a moon this is the moon This is the moon. Let me give you an assignment. As you go home, please use this week to listen to this message again. Don't assume that just because you were here, you heard it. If you are a man of God, listen again. There is the hearing that brings awareness, but there is the hearing that brings understanding. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. There is the hearing. Many of us, we have heard the hearing of awareness, but there is hearing unto understanding. And it says, the he that fell upon good ground is he that heard and understood. Not just he who was aware. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me make an altar call right now, and then I just speak over our lives. I want to plead with us that every time we're making a call, I know that there's a crowd of people Let's minimize unnecessarily, except if you have to. A minute or two spared for the altar call does not stop us from going wherever. Let's, as much as possible, except if we have to. It's important to practice that discipline. Let's not get too used to ignoring and shrugging of the altar call. There's someone here, you heard me speak. And for you, the first instruction in this season is to make it right with Jesus. You came to church from the prayer to the worship, the testimonies and all that has happened in this service has been prepared by the Spirit himself ultimately to lead you to a point where you see the need for Jesus. It matters that you make Jesus Lord of your life is beyond being a Christian. So I'm making a call right now for someone who came to church in this auditorium, all the overflows outside Zaria, 
and our global family who is saying, Apostle, I need to make it right with Jesus. Or perhaps you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I cannot say for sure that I'm walking in the things of God. The times that we live in demand certainty and seriousness. I want to count one to five very quickly for sake of time. And I beseech you to leave your seat and to quickly run and come and stand in front of me. You do same in all the viewing centers, overflows, and all our expressions. Wherever you are, as I count one to five, don't wait for someone to be the first to come. Run and come and stand before Jesus. One, Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a move. Please come, run to Jesus. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a moon. This is the moment we need more. This is the moment. Thank you very much for your courage. Jesus said, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Azaria family and all who are making this decision, as I lead these precious ones in prayer, please do join them, mean it from the depth of your heart. Let me request all of you who are in front, please lift your right hand if you can, high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this convincingly, let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, one more time, say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god amen Father, thank you for these precious people. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And based on the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven in the name of Jesus. The power to live a victorious Christian life, I release upon you right now. And I declare in Jesus' name that you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Now the counselors are waving the placard at you. Please do well to just move to my right, which is your left. They'll have a word with you very quickly, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them. Koinonia, give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Don't sin. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presence. All the pastors who have come, thank you. We sincerely appreciate and we honor you. Our international guests, thank you. Thank you for making our time. Azaria family, global community, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Now let me speak over your life one last time. In the name of Jesus, your weak beginning is declared blessed. Amen. Shout a louder amen. amen. The testimonies of favor you have received here and you have heard here, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you prophetically. This week is your turn. Amen. I say it again, this week is your turn. Yes. Therefore, all the men, the networks, the relationships, the systems that must align themselves prophetically to see to it that you enjoy the goodness of God this week. Let the power of God make it happen for you. Yes.
I declare fire upon your prayer altar. Passion to study the word. Passion for the house of God. Let the grace of God on your life speak this week. And everything that attempts to fight you goes down. Your children are blessed. The works of your hand blessed. In the name of Jesus. As for you, you will only go forward and upward. No bad news. No bad report. No evil news. You are preserved. Only for honor. Only for glory. Only for grace. Shame is far from your life. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Together let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos, we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed, that is going to set you on course, that is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.